Former Capitol Police chief reveals he was prevented from bringing in National Guard on January 6th due to optics. I don't like the optics of the National Guard on Capitol Hill. Capitol Hill. So this is uh, Tucker Carlson gave, did an interview with Capitol Police Chief, former Capitol Police Chief Stephen Sund, who said that basically they had intelligence. He was calling for National Guard on that day and they denied him across the board. I think there's more than enough evidence to show they at the like at the very least, I think it's definitive to say they were completely negligent. Donald Trump, of course, wanted more security. They said no. The media then lies and they're like, no, 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 no. Nancy Pelosi and, and, and Mayor Bowser, nothing to do with this. And now we're hearing from the police chief himself. He wanted more security and was denied it. Mm -hmm. They there's no way they did not know this was coming. No, absolutely not. I mean, as we've seen with all the, the developments that have come out with Ray Epps and, um, you know, the fact of the matter was that this was preplanned. A lot of um, federal agents were interspersed within the crowd. It wasn't just Ray Epps. Um, and this was being planned for at least months in advance. And they were the federal government was basically co-opting uh, the people who showed up there peacefully protesting on Capitol grounds, um, basically as, you know, as agents, as goading them into uh, trying to commit um, violence and inciting, sort you know, insurrectionary behavior, although this was not an insurrection at all. I mean, we, this we, so we, people tend to forget that this happened in the aftermath of obviously the George Floyd riots, which were caused billions of damages, looting, arson. Um, you know, this was nonstop uh, being broadcast in televisions across the country. Um, you know, CNN having mostly peaceful protests as the church across the street from the White House was being burned down. Yep. Um, and I, obviously, we saw it with the Kavanaugh protesters as well, storming the Supreme Court. And obviously, that was excused. So there's so much tension, so much buildup for months and months and months. And for, obviously, for, to what end? To what end? Because because if, if if you look at this, any sane person says the actions taken by the, the federal government, mm -hmm. by Milley, by Pelosi, by the Democrats, the indictments against Trump serve only to destroy this country. Right. They, they say that Trump is a threat to democracy and all of that stuff. But indicting your chief political opponent is literally just sticking a stake in the heart of the nation. You yeah. are you are you are destroying it actively. Right. Right. So we're supposed to believe that Trump's the threat to democracy. Meanwhile, Joe Biden told Merrick Garland to indict Trump. Mm -hmm. New York Times reported that mm -hmm. they're they're ripping this country to shreds. Right. And then you learn that uh, Joe Biden had some meetings with like some uh, Russian oligarchs and uh, a, 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 what is it? A wealthy Kazakh businessman. Mm -hmm. And then the next day, Hunter Biden gets this uh, very generous deposit, which was the exact amount needed to buy a very nice car. So it's it, it, on the surface, unless they come out and claim otherwise, the preponderance of evidence suggests that Joe Biden is heavily comp compromised mm -hmm. and is actively seeking to rip this country apart to benefit himself. And then we are all going to suffer for it. Yeah, absolutely. A hundred percent. And I think evidence for the fact that this was planned in advance uh, by the deep state, by our feds, was in the fact that they called it an insurrection from the get go. I mean, the the term insurrection obviously comes from the Constitution. I mean, this is obviously um you know a seditious conspiracy against the united states government and the fact that they wanted to label it as an insurrection from the beginning got that you know sort of in the public consciousness in the public mind people would talk about it obviously the mainstream media would go about it with their narrative would go crazy with it and then that basically ultimately set up these later indictments these you know groundless indictments by jack smith because you know he could basically retrofit that uh, that label, that legal term, uh, you know, as a matter of, you know, alleging this against uh, Donald Trump and the people who showed up there on January 6th. So, you know, I, I think everyone could see it for what it is at this point. I think obviously Trump supporters, millions of conservatives wake up and, and understand that, you know, between what was going on with big tech as well, the censorship there, um, you so know, you, between the Twitter files and everything else that was going on. You think Sam Harris is lying? <laughs> he, he said, you, you know, he was criticizing people like Joe Rogan and Jordan Peterson saying, you've got these people who think that uh, January 6th was a non-event and, you know, not one of the worst days in history and all that stuff. And Sam Harris, I personally think he's a liar. Mm -hmm. I think he is dishonest because you can't have a guy who is famous for go uh, one, of, one of the things he's famous for is going on Bill Maher and being heavily critical of people like Ben Affleck for blindly just defending Islamic extremists and things like that. And then turn around and just blanketly be like, Trump is the most dangerous thing to this nation. I don't care to hear evidence or debate it. 
Like you, you can't be the. So maybe he's got cognitive dissonance. And I don't mean to single out Sam Harris, but a lot of people who are trying to ham up January 6th as like the apocalypse. I'll tell you, you want to talk about insurrection and sedition conspiracy? You, you, you said it. Indicting the front runner for the 2024 presidential election, targeting his supporters, that is is destroying this country. Mm -hmm. I can't believe that. Well, I mean, I, I suppose now I, I should be able to believe it, but it, it's still, when I think about it, it's still surprising that it's so clearly politically motivated and there are still people that are defending it. And I maybe I'm just I had too much hope in uh, my fellow Americans, um, but it it really is disheartening when you know it's even if you think that what he did, what he's been accused of is legitimate, like what that it's legitimate. He actually violated the law. It's clear that he didn't do anything that was worse than any other president. And I don't see how you like to make the argument that you can that he's that he's uniquely bad. I, I don't see it, and I, I don't see anything positive for the country coming out of this. I mean, it's so obviously a political hit job. They're creating the law as they go. I mean, the charges that they brought Donald Trump up against in this latest indictment, this was for accounting fraud in the wake of like the Enron scandal. That's what the stat, that's what the statute is that they're wow. bringing him up against. And the other one is for like um, originally for um, it was an 1865 statute. Um, to you know, for the against the Ku Klux Klan, intended to um, you know go against the Ku Klux Klan for um, targeting uh, people, um, freed slaves at the time, um, using violence to prevent them from voting. So that, that's the statute that they're using against Donald Trump in this latest indictment. Obviously, it's makeshift to law. They're they're creating this as they go because it's the weaponization of the DOJ, the deep state against a political opponent. I mean, we've never had this before in American history where. Um, a president of the United States is going after, uh, you know, obviously the front runner and the now his lawyers. The man, yeah, I mean, and the consultants and the consultants, anyone who is associated with Donald Trump or went along with this. Um, you know, the the closest historical parallel to this is when Thomas Jefferson went went after Aaron Burr in 1807. Aaron Burr basically truly plotted to co a conspiracy against the United States, a real insurrection when he escaped to uh, basically Tex Texas at the time, the land that would become Texas, a Louisiana territory, which was Spanish owned at the time. And he plotted with the Spanish government to um, form his own government there as a direct challenge to Thomas Jefferson, given the fact that Burr had been serving as uh, Jefferson's vice president up until wow. 1805. So, I mean, and then Jefferson basically sent the feds after Burr at the, um, you know, and, and the federal judge, it was a, a trial presided over by Chief Justice Marshall at the time who acquitted Burr of his um, alleged crime. So even in that case, um, you had someone, you had Aaron Burr who truly went against the United States government acquitted for his crime. So, um, wow. you know, it just goes to show how unprecedented this is. Is it is it true that certain people got the call that day not to show up? I heard that theory. <laughs> it might might have been. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> and then, so maybe you could tell me more. The gates were just open, right? And people who walked in were arrested. True. Yeah. So if you just walked in, you right? Just, yeah, you you mean, go to something, were, you just see a gate open. You it's walk all on in video. You're, you're, not even a gate open. Yeah. So there were barricades at first, and I met a woman. She said that her and her husband showed up just shy of three o'clock. Right. Well after the barricades are torn down. Well after all the fighting. And they walked onto what is open grounds, typically open to the public, with mm -hmm. no signs anywhere, with no barricades, with no broken glass, because there was fighting on one side and nothing on the other. They walked up to the building. Doors were wide open. Cops were waving to people. Walked inside. She said it, the whole thing took six minutes. They walked in, walked out, looked around, and were like, whatever, and went home. Then they got served uh, criminal charges. Right. And they were like, we didn't even do anything. Right. They went to court, D.C. jury, and they said, we didn't go with this group. We weren't even there at that time. We just showed up and walked mm -hmm. around and we're told you joined the mob and so you're criminally responsible and now they're facing a year in prison. It's it horrible. seems like a huge setup. I, I did know yeah. someone who was in jail during that time period and it seems like, you know, even rapists and people that commit serious crimes can get out of jail right. sooner, quicker than some of the people that were involved with this, Absolutely. correct? I mean, yeah, I, that's how they're being treated. I mean, they're put away in the D.C. gulag. And, you know, we have to encourage our lawmakers, especially Republicans, to speak out against this because people are languishing behind bars and they're being, you know, treated worse than, uh, you know, domestic terrorists. I mean, they are being labeled domestic so terrorists. Do you, think it was a, do you think it was a setup? 
Uh, it seems that way. I mean, in this specifically in this indictment against Donald Trump, I, they conveniently always leave out the part when he said, "Everyone, return home peacefully." We're, we've we've made our point, we've made our message known, and everyone, you know, you, you protested, please return back home peacefully. They always clip that out of the video, and they always clip that out of uh, the complaint that they allege against Donald Trump uh, that they filed against Donald Trump. Um, you know, pe- vast majority of the people there. We're protesting peacefully that day. Um, from all the video that we see, these people were let in freely um, into the Capitol. They weren't, you know, barging in. They weren't going in violently. They were basically let in by Capitol Police from but all the video that we see. Everything and, we're um, seeing with these indictments right. is basically like we're playing Monopoly. And our, the guy we're playing against grabs a bunch of money out of the out of the, the bank and says, mm-hmm. oh, it's the uh, um, it's the it's the, the Murphy rule. Yeah. And you're like, wait, 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 what is that? No, no, that's in the book. Don't worry. Your turn. Roll the dice. And mm-hmm. you're like, wait, wait, hold on. You just grabbed a bunch of money. What are you doing? No, no, no. Oh, oh now I got to move your guy to jail. Like, wait, 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 wait. Hold on. Why? What are you doing? No, I'm sorry. Those are the rules. I have no choice. And we're just going, oh, okay, darn. He got me again. Mm-hmm. It's like, no, no, at a certain point, you realize these charges are nonsense. Right. They're locking up people who bumbled around and didn't even know what was going on. And they're just going, oh, I'm, those are the rules. Like, we have to arrest you. Yeah. You agree with that, right. right? And people are like, yeah, I guess so. Right. So the- it seems like they just want to implement a fear-based thing to anyone who questions they create the rules of the game and we go along with it they want to pump as much fear into you as they can right right if you're doing this we're gonna you're you're gonna go to jail for this amount of time and you're gonna be this is a serious crime yeah and when just walking onto grounds there's no sign there's no one telling you not to do it there's no it's there's a such there's such a thing still called the first amendment people have a right to protest people have a right to petition their government people have a right to speak and obviously all these things have been trampled over by the Biden regime by their uh, friends in Silicon Valley, as we've seen with the Twitter files, as we've seen with Facebook. To be fair, um, it's not. I mean, it's been there's been a whole lot of trampling for the past twenty years. It's not just and, Biden. Well, crimes it, it, already. I mean, I mean, went, one of the Proud <laughs> Boys who back, one of the Proud Boys who got convicted of conspiracy. There's video of him at the Capitol saying, "Don't go inside. Don't go in." And <laughs> yeah. they, he got convicted of what? Like that's, that's what I'm saying. It's like playing Monopoly, mm-hmm. and your opponent just grabs your piece and puts it in the jail and says, "Now you have to stay there." And you're like, "Why?" And like, uh, "It's uh, the, the Levante rule." And you're like, oh, it is? I'm like, that's right. And you go, guess that's I right. lose again. That's right. I win. You lose. That's right. You just got You just, that's, it, what they, that's what they said. That's how it works when you play board games with four-year-olds. I mean, it's, there's no logic. It's all emotionally based. Well, I mean, to, that's. To be honest, that's how, you, that's how you play when you're the four-year-old. Or when there are four-year-olds who are like, no, I changed the rules. I mean, right. it's just, it's ridiculous to have this level of government being able to manipulate things and costing people their lives i mean all of the january 6 defendants sacrificed so much to try and keep up like a lot of them don't always know where people that they're related to what jails they're being held in like where their cases are going they all when i was interviewing them they were saying you know we just lean on each other and we hope that they get a judge that is somewhat sympathetic because mm-hmm. we know all the G- dc juries will ultimately convict them and that's that must be uh such a terrible feeling to be like there's no hope for me and the american justice system is going to continue to ruin my life afterwards thanks for watching this clip from the timcast irl podcast hang out with us live monday through friday at 8 p.m and become a member over at timcast.com for uncensored members only shows exclusive thanks for hanging out and we'll see you all next time